Hello there, kitties. I'm Kari, the vacuum tube witch. And this time I will be talking about the spectrum. But I don't mean the autism spectrum. It's some other spectrum. <laughs> Get this little thing of beauty in for repair. It is all. It is uh, as old as me. 1986. It was built in 1996. It was an 8-bit uh, computer, pretty popular here in Poland. This actually is the um, ZX Spectrum Plus Two, and this is the first revision built uh, not by Sinclair but by Amstrad it was uh, the transitional uh, ZX Spectrum and it has a bunch of bugs the um, bunch of uh, electronic assembly and, um, and design bugs that uh, I'm gonna try my hand at, uh, at tackling on the bench I will also um, modify the video output part because um, it is possible to have uh, audio uh, the, the analog audio that you find here it is possible to route um, the analog audio uh, out uh, through this uh, DIN part it was done in the later versions, um, the so-called uh, Peritel uh, connection. Uh, this is basically what you know as uh, Euroscart. The I got it on my TV. Yeah, the good old Euroscart with RGB connections and. Uh, and uh, composite video synchronization but before I even start uh, doing anything with uh, the specy let's just connect it see how it works I'm not sure if you will be able to hear what's happening with it but uh, there's a pretty nasty noise problem with uh, with the audio and uh, my mission is to to tackle this very problem so firing up the the specy and the tv it should come up real soon Yeah, volume up and uh, you can hear, you can hear the hum, you can hear the buzz. If I disconnect the audio connection, it's all gone. And I also uh, tested the audio part uh, on my uh, signal tracer slash amplifier so it's not exactly the problem with uh, with the tv computer uh, connection but uh, it's on the board uh, somewhere inside so i will have to take a closer look and uh, trace the signal so let's get to the bench so I'm at my bench with the specky and let's disassemble it. First of all, let's take out the compact flash interface. Yeah, the modern solution so that you can't uh, you don't have to use um, cassettes for storing your data. And it works really fast compared um, to the speed uh, 
way back when if you had to load a program from the cassette. It took a lot of time. Now it just loads right away. In order to lift the cover, I have to move it uh, slightly, the, the tape uh, transport way, because there is a uh, heat sink underneath that, uh, that prevents uh, it uh, from uh, just lifting like that, if you see here. <coughs> This is this uh, this heat sink, and uh, now that uh, now that this is partly discombobulated, uh, the tape transport is disconnected. It will be time to plug it in and uh, test whether the buzz comes through the tape transport or from somewhere else. So I just need to get my cables. I won't connect the, the type transport. All I need to connect is the AV. And I can still hear some noise. Though it's not as bad as uh, when... Uh, when the type transport is connected. So uh, it is um, my suspicion that uh, the part that comes from the type transport um, is the is something like uh, badly filtered uh, DC. It might be it might be possible because we've got uh, capacitors uh, all over the, the board, uh, they are quite old and uh, they will certainly have to be replaced. So, time to discombobulate it some more. Let's uh, let's take out the type transport PCB and see what's going on with it. And just a shielded cable, a capacitor. 10 volt for 170 microfarad. Twenty two microfarad. Yeah, just in case I might be replacing those. It's a pretty long and tedious process, so I will I will probably do it off the camera. Also worth noting is that the record uh, playback switch it's the typical isostat um, often found on the polish electronics so if it's dirty or not working anymore then i have something to replace it with that would unfortunately break the originality of um, this computer so if it's not 
really necessary. I I rather not do it. What I definitely want to do is uh, swapping the polarity on uh, three transistors uh, to an uh, 3904 because those transistors are soldered in uh, the opposite way <coughs> and I will also want to make a uh, jumper modification of uh, this Commodore allowing me to derive the audio signal on this DIN connector and in order to do that I would have to change uh, LK7 to LK8 and uh, that's pretty much that I will have to rotate the the TR4, TR5 uh, and TR7 <coughs> where was uh, this is the TR7 uh, TR4 is here and TR5 dusky uh, little bugger here it is so uh, this is the part that I will do right now. Plus there is this uh, capacitor that uh, adds the FM modulated uh, audio signal to, <coughs> to the composite uh, video going to the encoder and uh, and then to the high frequency interface and uh, if this capacitor is the cause of the humming problems like uh, the owner hypothesized and uh, I have pretty much doubt about it then it will also have to go it looks like an uh, aftermarket mod but it was actually factory installed in the earlier version uh, of uh, of this board this is the the Z70500 uh, issue 3 and this is the one with uh, swapped transistors and I will now Tackle those transistor problems. Gonna be a little bit careful about it so that I don't damage the printed circuit board. Came out really nicely. And now let's grab a syringe needle clean the holes And counterintuitively, put the transistor back uh, unlike it was uh, installed. Clean out the legs some more, and I will need to straighten them.
Let's try and do some more. Come on, for crying out loud. And it's soldering time. And repeat the same with two more transistors. Let me grab some medical forceps to grab this transistor. From the other side. <laughs> and it went just like that. So easy. This was too easy. try using a slightly thicker needle for cleaning the holes to make my work easier. Yeah, this one was a little bit tricky, but it's still beautiful. The transistor still on the forceps. maneuver it with some tweezers. Bend the leg just a teeny tiny bit.
tools there. Get yourself in the position. So the second transistor, it's done. By the way, this modification, uh, it, uh, it has to be done because uh, there was a certain change uh, during the manufacturing process that uh, the the makers the factory switched over to to an uh, 3904 from some uh, other transistor that had a different pinout and because of this uh, those transistors uh, have uh, the collector and uh, emitter swapped they are just swapped and uh, can't uh, work uh, as intended because uh, there was an uh, old marking uh, the old solder mask uh, on the PCB but uh, the manufacturing uh, the assembly the people who did uh, electronic assembly because I uh, I uh, don't think uh, that uh, pick and place machines were involved. It was all. It was all the double-sided um, through-hole technology. And I don't think that uh, any automatic assembly was involved. And so. Uh, the assemblers just uh, put those transistors in uh, like the like the markings on the on the board side but uh, they couldn't really know that uh, that those markings are no longer correct that uh, that the PCB should be redesigned in later issues it was but uh, but this was uh, the problematic issue where old PCB was uh, was just uh, tried to to be made to work with uh, updated components uh, but uh, but the assemblers uh, the people who did the soldering didn't know that So straightening the pins again. And time to clean the holes. If I can see solder on this side, uh, I will be able to heat it up and uh, drive the needle from this side but uh, if it's too recessed uh, I have to hit it from the other side and time to put the dusky little bugger back in in its place uh, only reversed This is the kind of electronic repairs that I enjoy the most. Working with through hole technology, not the SMD. I 
there's just uh, not that much uh, precision involved. You don't have to fix the board uh, under a microscope. So now the sound mod. Time to make some place for the for the new jumper. I'll have a go at uh, desoldering the old jumper. Try to grab it with the medical forceps. Uh, then I will add some solder on this side to ease the thermal contact and Pulling it gently, heating it up and pulling it, it uh, gently out. It comes off, it comes out so nicely and and now it's time to place it in in the new position. So the jumper is replaced and we've got audio on the output part. And it will be time to quickly test uh, if the audio issue is gone. So uh, I have to have the voltage regulator connected at this point uh, if i'm successful i can proceed with uh, modifying the audio video cable connect the keyboard and And then, and then it will be time to connect the power. Bad buzzing. It's bad buzzing time again. This doesn't solve the problem. Makes me wonder if I can test it without the keyboard. I only have to have the video and audio out. So uh, trying to desolder this dodgy looking capacitor. Ah, of course, I forgot about the voltage regulator. <laughs> we 
Without the capacitor, the problem persists. Or it just touched. It just touched the, the board by accident. So I will have to retest. Uh, Yeah, capacitor or no capacitor, it's still the same. I'd better work on the decoupling on uh, on the power line decoupling, because uh, this is uh, the the most probable cause. Uh, for any audio related problems, uh, any hum, any buzz, uh, it's uh, it's just uh, it's just uh, ground issues, it's just power issues. Let's rotate the, the TV slightly and I will have to use a scope to look for the source of the problem this is probably not grounded but uh, but this will be grounded and i will have to Put my uh, put my scope to the ground. Got a good ground on it. Probably the the switch uh, the switches enclosure should be grounded. Uh, let me test that. Don't assume it makes an ass of you and me.
doesn't hear any noise now. Time for a slightly deeper in the investigation. It's pretty strange that uh, if I uh, if I have the the video plugged in, I can uh, I can hear the noise. But uh, if I don't have the video plugged in, I can't hear it. But. Uh, but then it might be the, the ground problem. And uh, I will probably use the signal tracer to look for audio output. Out of view. Connecting video, but no audio. Yeah, I need to connect the connect the ground. <coughs> Before I can do anything, I have to connect the ground. That's pretty interesting that uh, LK7, I probably shouldn't have uh, touched it because I I got uh, 1.6 volt DC in the P position, the Pogato, and uh, I've got the audio signal on, uh, on the S position like it was originally. Fuck it. That's that's bullshit. That's bullshit. It's uh, it's completely different than uh, in the schematic. You can never trust the schematics for those things. You can never trust the schematics. Anyway, I've uh, I've got some uh, signal on the scope. Let's uh, let's change the view a little bit. So we've got the the new development at Caritac Electronics is the test gear cam. <laughs> so I can show you what's happening on the scope. And if I touch the audio part that is available on on the LK7, not the LK8, I've got some weird uh, shenanigans uh, that looks like some kind of a fuzzy 
fuzzy square wave I will need to look closer where it gets from in order to do that I will have to try and uh, and find the schematic Okay, so at the bench again, and I probably know the source of the issue with with the buzzing problem that uh, I think it will be tackled after I modify the signal cable. Because uh, it looks like uh, after I modded it uh, to Pagato and uh, even before the red, uh, green and blue signals uh, that were uh, summed, they were uh, fed uh, also into the audio line and one one slide mod of the cable should uh, take care of it pretty nicely. Let's uh, let's get rid of uh, of diodes um, that are already found uh, in the original spectrum. Because there are three diodes and uh, resistors uh, summing the, um, the red, green and blue signals. And uh, let's get rid of those pesky little buggers. Get rid of those diodes and resistors while also resoldering those signal cables. I will also have to take a look at the DIN side <coughs> the, the yellow cable it is now free I may, not, uh, may use it for the audio uh, signal ground but what I'm gonna do now is uh, removing the mini jack connector, routing the audio uh, through through pin number number three. And I will also use a separate ground uh, <coughs> for audio and video. So we've got our audio signal. Oh wait, where's the side cutters? No. So 
So I'm gonna cut this connection, remove the audio cable. And solder the audio signal to pin number three that has been repurposed for audio connection. Oh, well, maybe I should do it on the on the skirt side. This will then be our audio ground and let this be the audio signal. Audio ground is right between um, the left and uh, right channel audio signals. Let's connect it here. On the other side, let's connect the audio ground to the general ground contact pin number two. And the signal cable is now modified to act as a proper Euroscart uh, supporting the audio and video signals. And this will also open a new possibility so that uh, if you have a amplifier or a PA system uh, at an event, or uh, some other audio uh, sync, maybe maybe a tape recorder, uh, anything that uh, has an audio input, you could connect uh, the ZX Spectrum to it and uh, and run some uh, run some demos, uh, create something in Fast Track or or uh, some other some other tracker application. So uh, recombobulating the the DIN signal plug.
Okay, here I am with the TV. Connect the audio video interface first and then connect the power. That's a strange one. Looks like I will have to do some more testing. It worked, but why did it stop?
Raptors versus the me. So, to, to get started, uh, press the press any key, press the button on the interface, and let's find some demo. <laughs> Any random one should suffice. Seemingly nothing happening. Now we have to reset the computer. And uh, press the J or, or load key. And double quote. Enter. See? <laughs> Ain't that fun? <laughs> or maybe let's just play a game. <laughs> yeah, let's go to games. And uh, is there anything like a global thermonuclear war? Galactic gunners? <laughs> Interesting. So, reset. Load, double, close, enter. <laughs> hey, it shows trans bright colors. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, what's uh How do I shoot? How do Did I break it? Okay, that's pretty unintuitive. It is pretty unintuitive. Maybe something different.
maybe it will give us a better view. Reset again and load and... OPQM. Zetax Center Spice. Zetax Center Spice. Mm, let's choose this one. Mary. Mary Mouse Super Cup. <laughs> Welcome, Murray. We wish you luck in your quest. Catch the ten ring readers in the nasty, nice conspiracy. Conspiracy. <laughs> the mice have set many puzzles and traps to stop you. Are they uh, biker mice from Mars or, or who? Good morning, young Murray. Looks like I ain't gonna do this jump. Oh, what a lovely day for catching nasty looking mice! <laughs> Why did the mushroom go to the party? Uh, I'm not sure. I think I will have to ask Sans. <laughs> because he was a fun guy. <laughs> yeah. Love the puns. A manhole cover prevents your access into the sewer. Pesky little bugger, anyway. Looks like I ain't gonna get it. Sewer key. So I've got the sewer key. So time to open the sewer. You open the sewer entrance. A cry of pain echoes through the sewer chamber. A plank. Some torch holders uh, open secret passages. Don't get burned. 
Maybe I shouldn't go this way. Maybe I should go this way. Yeah, kind of reminds me of Prince of Persia. I can become quickly trapped, but I found no other way. I can't see any other way. If I can make this jump... Bad luck! <laughs> I lost a life. <laughs> The bat says, I hope you know there's no escape from here. Maybe I should just lie down and go to sleep. good at that. It's the first time I play it. That is fun. Magnetron that tap. Is it about microwave tubes or what? Let me see it. <laughs> I don't expect a microwave circuitry calculator to be in the games folder. <laughs> Magnetron! <laughs> yeah, pretty nice typeface. Come on, camera, focus on me. I guess it's getting defocused. Uh, let's, let's do some manual correction. And that about should do it. How the fuck is shenanigans time again? Cursor keys or AGF? Try the second.
Okay. That was pretty unintuitive. How to start even? Okay. Isometric graphics. Mm, that's that's nice. <laughs> Reminds me of the time when I played Crusader, no remorse and no regret. Careful not to fall! Oh, for crying out loud! Get up there! Just get up there! Now to figure out how to start! I think uh, it was delete. That was nasty. Moskva. Right over Moscow. <laughs> that looks pretty basic. That looks pretty basic. Butter not pie. Paper not pie. Pretty nice graphics. Let's try this one. Yeah, 
know something like Space Invaders. But I don't know why I can't move. And that happens. No, okay, maybe... Maybe it's time for some demo. Dark music. <laughs> yeah, who doesn't? Who doesn't love his LX spectrum? Okay. I quit this part. It will be, it will be so much fun to ship this Spectrum back to the customer who had it uh, in for repair. Let it be a lot of fun. See you in the next one. Bye.